Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs and I'm a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be discussing the using dynamic applications in unified policies with JWeb Learning Byte. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right to the example. Uh, in this example, we have a user who connects into VSRX1 that then connects to the internet. And this user needs to access the internet. It's kind of important for most users today. And what we need to do for this example is we do want the users to be able to use Reddit. However, we don't want the advertisements that come through to be shown. And so what we're going to do is we're first going to discover what the application signature is being used for Reddit for those advertisements. And then we're going to use a dynamic application in a unified policy to block those advertisements on Reddit. So let's go ahead and jump to the JWeb interface and have a look at this. All right, so here is the JWeb dashboard. Let's go ahead and go to configure mode, and then we'll go to security policy rules, and then let's create a new rule. Now this rule, we'll call this rule catch all, because what we're gonna do is this is going to be our catch all rule that we're going to use to identify what that application is that we want to block. So let's go to source, we're gonna say from users, destination, we're gonna leave this dynamic application to any, that's good. Now. With the services, we could leave that at any, it would work, but the Junos defaults service is what is meant to be used here. And then under advanced security, we're gonna select permit, and then we're going to select an SSL proxy profile. Now this SSL proxy profile was created earlier, so keep that in mind. I do have some learning bytes that I did do earlier that discusses how to configure SSL proxy. So if you wanna know how to do that, please go check that out. But we need to apply this here because we will be dealing with encrypted traffic. And so we need to see what's inside that encrypted traffic. And so then after that, we'll just click Next, click Finish, click OK. And we're good there. Let's go ahead and commit the configuration. All right, the configuration is committed. Let's go ahead and jump to the user and see what we get. All right, so here is the user. Let's go ahead and open Chrome. And let's go to Reddit. We should see some advertisements pop up. There we go on the right side there. See one that popped up. Definitely don't want the advertisement. There should be another one here. For some reason, it's not popping up. Let's try that again. There we go. So yes, we have some advertisements popping up on Reddit. Great. We want to block that, so let's go and have a look and see what those actual applications are. All right, so with this part of the learning byte, we're actually going to look at the application system cache in the CLI for VSRX1. There's really no good way to look at the application systems cache through JWeb, so we're gonna have to look at it here. All right, so as we're looking through the application system cache, it's kind of a lot to look through. So you can look through this, see what's in here, there's gonna be a bunch of stuff in here. Now, one thing that I know from my previous research with advertisements is that there's things, there's certain applications that definitely refer to advertisements or, or that use advertisements. And so instead of just scrolling through this whole list, we're just gonna do a quick search. Double click is one of those that I know has ads. And so more than likely, that's the case. We do have double click here. It is encrypted. This is why it's so very important that we use that SSL proxy rule. And so let's go ahead and jump to JWeb and configure another rule to block this type of traffic. So here's JWeb again. We're still under security policies. All right, so here we're going to create a new rule that's going to catch that, uh, that dynamic application of double click to block that ad. So we're going to create a rule here. We're going to call this block ads. Uh, then go to source, set the source zone as users, click next. Uh, and then we want to set the dynamic application. Instead of any, we want to set this to search for double click. Click OK. And then services automatically get set to Juno's defaults. Perfect. Okay, under advanced security, we want to set this to reject. Now, there is a bit of a problem here. 
you might notice that SSL proxy is grayed out here. Now that's an oversight and something that will be fixed in a future version of JWeb, but as far as 18.2 R1, that's gonna be a problem with JWeb, but we still can get around that with using the CLI, so keep that in mind, it's not a huge deal. And then we can go to Rural Options, and then we can say, log at session init, enable count, click Finish there, click OK. And then after that, we want to commit the configuration. And we can look at the rules. Now, you might notice that block adds is after catch all. We definitely don't want to do that. We want to move it. And then we want to commit. Again, we could have done that before we committed, the first time that is. So we look at the rules now. We'll see that, yeah, that looks better. That's what we want. But keep in mind, we need to do some CLI editing. Okay, so the quickest way to do this, we could use the CLI tools and CLI editor. But for the sake of time, I'm just going to jump back to the CLI and we're going to just add it through there. And commit that. Okay, so that's great. So now let's go ahead and jump back to the user and see what happens. Actually, before we do that, let's jump to the JWeb interface. And I do want to, since we have count enabled on that, we can go to the monitor workspace and then we can go to the security, policy, activities, and we can monitor this as it does it. It will refresh automatically every 30 seconds. So we'll see the refresh. So let's go ahead and jump to the user now. Okay, so I'm going to first clear the data, clear the cache, we don't have anything left, leftovers. We're going to start Chrome again, click Reddit, and we should have the ads blocked. Now we'll see what happens. See on the right, nothing is showing up yet. That looks pretty good. Scroll down, no other advertisements. Just wait another few seconds. And I think it's safe to say things look good. So let's go ahead and jump back to the JWeb interface. So here is the JWeb interface, and you can see we've getting some hits on this policy. Perfect. Let's just do a manual refresh. So we get, yes, and we can see there's actual hits. Perfect. That's what we want to see. We see the traffic being hit here. Now the other thing I do want to look at is if we go to the administration workspace, we can also look at the log files. And we go down to messages, which is right here. I'm just going to highlight it over so I make sure I click the right download and I could scroll this over and move it over, not really scrolled over. Then we scroll all the way down. We should see some stuff. And I do want to, we'll just search for, okay, so there's going to be a few things in here. Block ads. Here we go. Session deny block ads. This is what we want to see. I can point out a few things in here for you. That's perfect. We see the application of double click. We see that it's being blocked and rejected. So awesome. This is exactly what we want to be seeing. We are blocking this application, which means we're not going to see ads. And now one thing I do want to point out is ads, you know, this isn't the only form of, of advertisements on the internet, obviously. So keep that in mind. We're just blocking one specific type of ads here. If you want to block all ads, you'd have to look into that further. So keep that in mind as, as you use uh, unified policies with dynamic applications. All right, so that brings us to the end of this learning bite. We discussed dynamic applications in unified policies with JWeb, and we demonstrated how to configure and verify dynamic applications in unified policies in JWeb. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.